Welcome to District M's interview series, where we take the time to look at and understand the issues that directly impact the publishing and advertising industry. Cybercrime is at an all-time high, costing the global economy a staggering $450 billion in 2016. This statistic, along with many others that illustrate a similar growing trend, underpin the need for action to be taken. One such measure to counteract this, and is the topic of today's interview, is the General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR. My interview today is with Chantal Bernier, who for five and a half years led the Office for the Privacy Commissioner of Canada, the OPC, as both Interim Privacy Commissioner and as Assistant Commissioner. She oversaw the operation of the OPC, including national and international privacy investigations, privacy audits, and privacy impact assessment reviews. Today, she joins us in her current capacity as National Leader for Privacy and Cybersecurity at Dentons, the world's largest law firm, to talk about the implications around GDPR and how it applies to the advertising and publishing industry across the US and Canada. So Chantal, firstly, thank you very much for your time today. Um, I think this is going to be a great conversation point. Many people in our industry are interested around data privacy and GDPR coming from the other side of the pond. So I think uh, today is going to be a fitting interview. So firstly, Chantal, what is GDPR? So as you said in the introduction, it's the General Data Protection Regulation. What it's going to do is in fact replace all national European privacy laws. So at the moment of coming into force, May 25th, 2018, and by the way, there is no grace period, all domestic, national, privacy laws in Europe will be abrogated and replaced by the General Data Protection Regulation, which essentially creates a new regime for the protection of privacy in Europe. And so it's not just a European thing, it's affecting people outside of Europe. Correct, because the scope of GDPR is that it applies to any organization that offers products or services in Europe. So to quote Brad Smith on this, the president of Microsoft, just because he has quips that are not necessarily rigorous, but evocative, that's for sure. He says, if you've ever heard about Europe, it applies to you. And I think it's a good way to awaken to the fact that indeed it is far reaching. And so, for the publisher and advertisers based in Canada and US, how is this actually going to affect them? So obviously uh, publishers and marketers do not know boundaries because they work online. Now that is truly the manner in which they function and do their business. And we know the internet does not know boundaries. Clearly publishers, advertisers, marketers must get ready for GDPR. So how should they? The publishers are the ones that have the highest level of responsibility, so to speak, because they are the ones that are the first interface with the user. You go on a website and you will search it and you will then get ads. But your interaction is with a website, it was with a platform. The advertisers come through a contract, as you know, with the publishers. So that the publisher is setting the terms for that interaction. And perhaps one way to illustrate it concretely, even though it was pre-GDPR, is an investigation uh, that I released in 2014 when I was then commissioner for Privacy for Canada, and it's about Google online behavioral advertising. In a nutshell, what had occurred was that the complainant realized that his health information was tracked in his Google searches. Even though Google says in its privacy policy it will not track on the basis of sensitive information, and it defines as sensitive information, among others, health information. So he said, Google tracked me since they're serving me ads corresponding to my health searches, clearly they're tracking me. Google said, oh, we've looked into it. It's nothing to do with us. It's an advertiser who has not followed our policy. To which we reply, it's your platform. 
you are the interface with the user. You must ensure that the terms of engagement with the user are respected. Therefore, you have to make sure that your advertisers are in line. And indeed, uh, Google did improve its compliance mechanisms in that regard. But it shows to you that the first responsibility belongs to the publisher, because that's who receives the information, and that's who determines how it will be used. The advertisers must comply with the publisher's conditions as it has negotiated them with the user. But what are the steps that an advertiser or a publisher needs to take to ensure that they're ready for GDPR? Okay, so review all of their operations, modalities in relation to GDPR. Concretely, if we take it chronologically with user interface, the first thing I'd look at is, are the consent forms appropriate? Meaning, is there any collection of personal information that should be subject to a higher consent level than others according to GDPR? So make sure the consent is properly secured. In consent is implicit that the privacy policies have to be very clear because consent has to be informed. A clear privacy policy is not a long one. It is a concise one. It gives all the information that is needed, but not in five pages. Nobody reads five pages. So one good way to do it is to tear it. So there's a first short pop-up that says, for example, we collect cookies. Cookies actually recognize your computer, we their you know, IP address. Um, we don't share it with everyone. Are you okay with this? And the person can click yes. Or would you like to learn more? And then the person can click that, and then it goes to a bit more complete privacy policy for the user who wants to know more. But you see, then you have this tiering, which allows for concise alert, let's say, to the user, and yet easy access to greater information. Then the second thing that the publishers have to do is obviously look at their contracts with the advertisers, making sure that the advertisers are compliant, making sure that there's no data leakage, very important in that regard, and uh, therefore have a structure that is corresponding to GDPR on their platform. So who should an advertiser or publisher reach out to to find out what their next steps are? Because it's not just a couple of steps they're going to take, there's going to be quite a few other elements they need to consider. Well, so the first one is that you need a lawyer who is expert in this area, because it's many lawyers will just refer you to someone else, because it's very specific. So get a privacy lawyer and meet and compare to do a gap analysis of your operations and what GDPR requires. Once that gap analysis is done, then there will be policies that will need to be changed and that the lawyer will produce. There may be technological updates that may have to be implemented, and that it could be a data security uh, person or it can be some the person in-house the IT person in-house. So I'll give you an example. Say uh, you don't have a mechanisms to provide access because one of the rights that GDPR creates, formalizes, is that a person has the right to know what a company has in terms of personal information about that person. Well, the company, to give full realization to that right, needs to be able to get back to that information. So technologically, is the mechanism there. So that would be, obviously, either an in-house technologist or an external technologist, but that's the other person that will make it happen. So we talked a lot about how it affects advertisers and publishers, but what about the consumers? How does this impact them? What do they need to understand or consider? So one of the objectives of GDPR, one of the central objectives of GDPR, is to empower the individual so that the consumer can now have greater mechanisms to access his or her personal information that an organization, a publisher, for example, would have uh, about
about their internet searches, for example, or about their um, information that they have put on um, forms and, and so on. Also, uh, data portability, which means that a consumer can request that, say, the personal information it gave to an internet service provider can be portable to another internet service provider without paying, without charge, just transferable to a new internet service provider if they want to change. There's also the right to correction, so making sure that, let's say, there is misrepresentation, inaccurate information, the individual has the right to have it rectified. There's also the right to be forgotten, uh, which is where for example, through the passage of time or through change in context, the information that is published about a person is no longer accurate, then the person has the right to go to, say, the publisher and say, de-index that, erase that, put it aside, you know, make it non-accessible because it is no longer accurate. So Chantal, thanks again for your time today. Uh, it's been some great insight around GDPR and how it affects publishers and advertisers in Canada. My pleasure. Uh, that's all for now. We hope you found this interview useful. If so, please like and share. And also, if you have any feedback or any other topics you'd like us to address in further interviews, then drop us on a link that follows. Mm -hmm.